Okay, so here we're going to talk about genitourinary infections. And it's important to note that many different types of pathogens can gain access to the urinary tract and the reproductive systems because they are open to the outside environment. Now we're going to have some infections that can begin in the urinary system and then they can travel to the bladder, reach the kidneys, and these can become life-threatening depending on the type of pathogen. And a variety of reproductive system infections are known as our sexually transmitted diseases. So overall infections can be bacterial of nature. We can have our bacterial infection of the urinary tract, bacterial infections of the reproductive tract, as well as viral infections and fungal infections, especially candida. Now the urinary tract is basically, urine is treated as sterile. So similar to the cerebral spinal fluid, if there is presence of pathogens, this is going to indicate a urinary tract infection. Just simply because of the anatomy, urinary tract infections are more common in women than men and bacteria is are going to be the common cause, or our yeast will also be a cause for urinary tract infections. You can have bacteria and yeast enter the renal tract, and this is going to um, be through the renal artery. In nephritis, infection of the kidneys, bacteria will enter the blood via the renal vein, and this can result in bacteremia. And again, if this is caused by a gram-negative bacterium, they always have their endotoxin, LPS, and that can lead to um, sepsis. Now, your organisms can also flow to the um, kidneys, um, and the main access, of course, is going to be in the lower urinary tract through the urethra. Now, UTIs are going to pose several important serious problems, especially in hospitals. So these can be associated with catheters and bacteria or yeast cells will attach to the actual catheter and reach the bladder via this route. In the case of a catheter infection, you should always give antibiotics followed by removal of the catheter. The urinary tract infections also have different names depending on their place of infection. So urethritis is the infection of the urethra, cystitis will be infection of the bladder, nephritis, infection of the kidney, and prostatitis, infection of the prostates. Now for bacterial urinary tract infections, um, few bacteria can routinely enter the bladder, and this is because your um, system is exposed to the environment, to the external environment. They can also enter through blood passing through the renal artery, and this is going to normally be flushed out during your urination, does not cause any problems. The UTIs are going to um, be common during the first three months of life in males, and after preschool age, they become more common in females. And this is going to be due to anatomical changes. Now, you're also going to have changes in, with respect to aging. And so in aging individuals, this is going to be, it's a chronic bacteria in the urine is going to be more common. And this is often going to be asymptomatic. Oftentimes, people who are elderly and have urinary tract infections will have um, neurologic um, symptoms. And so in a long-term care facility, people who experience long, um, neurologic symptoms often are tested for whether or not they have a bacteria UTI. You can also have um, prostates. Enlargement of the prostates as you age will increase the incidence of UTIs. Surgeries, um, chronic catheterization, etc. can also increase the incidence of bacteria UTIs. Now some of the common causes of bacteria UTIs are listed here. We have our gram-negative normal flora, Escherichia coli, which is typically in the colon, but if you can access to the um, urinary tract, it can actually 
um, move down through the bladder and into the kidney and cause um, damage to the kidneys and potentially sepsis. All of our gram negatives have the potential to cause sepsis um, if they release their um, endotoxin into the blood. And then we have our typical normal flora bacteria as well that are gram positive, our staphylococcus um, aureus, as well as coagulase negative staphylococcus, which are non staphylococcus aureus, and as well as enterococcus. It's important to point out that E. coli counts for about 90% of your, and your um, cystitis and nephritis infections. And so um, E. coli is a normal flora bacteria that can gain access. Now all portions of the urinary tract are going to be connected, so infection spreads very easily. And nosocomal bacteria UTIs are a very important problem. And it can be complicated by things like Staph aureus if they are antibiotic resistant. Now in general, your bacteria um, urinary tract infections will have um, no recognizable illness in about over 50% of people. And then some are going to have urethritis and cystitis. So this can lead to uh, frequency and urgency to um, urinate, lower back pain, abdominal pain, and tenderness over the bladder, as well as cloudy liver, uh, urine, sorry, cloudy urine because there are bacteria present. Cystitis is going to have a acute onset and more severe symptoms, and this is going to have blood um, bacteriaemia in the blood and in the urine. So nephritis is going to be inflammation of the kidneys, and so this is going to lead to pain and fever. This is also, in severe cases, can cause septic shock because E. coli is the most common, and this has, of course, LPS, which can cause shock. There are also other causes, Proteus, Klebsiella, Enterobacter, Pseudomonas, and Staph and Strep. And another risk factor is going to be, of course, obstruction, which leads to toxins in the body. Now, prostatitis is going to be in males, and this is going to be, again, pain in the lower back, perirectal area, and testicles. It's going to be associated with fever, chill, symptoms similar to what we see with bacteria cystitis. You're going to have swelling that can lead to obstruction of the urethra. And then this retention of urine leads to abscesses. And you can also have um, seminal uh, vesiculitis. You can have acute prostatitis in young men, Oops. and the more chronic will be in um, elderly men. Now for bacteria UTIs, you're going to use um, trimethoprim. This can be used alone or in combination with other um, antibiotics such as fluoroquinolones. And you're going to basically treat based on antimicrobial susceptibility tests because, again, some of our normal flora, especially nosocomal infections, can have antibiotic resistance. Your duration could be um, prolonged depending on the severity of the infection. And successful treatment is determined by culture of the year and two weeks after therapy has begun to see if you have no more um, bacteria in your urine.